And then we come to the last verse, to verse 45, in Daniel chapter 11. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. And I must admit that this verse is the most difficult word, verse for me to understand. But we shall try to go through it. <clears throat> In verse 41, we have seen that the king of the north will enter into the glorious holy mountain. And many people will fall. But in verse 45, none of God's people are to be overthrown. This is a fact, even though the king of the north is saying, is said to plant the tabernacles of his palace in the glorious holy mountain. It is this little word in that has troubled so many Bible students. Literally, in the Hebrew Bible, verse 45 does not say in the glorious holy mountain. It actually says, pitches tents from the seas to the glorious holy mountain. The word to is a better rendering than either the word in or at. So it seems that the king of the north this time never will be able to overcome or enter into the glorious holy mountain. God's people will be faithful and the papacy will not manage to deceive the people of God as in verse 41. And we have to take a conclusion of this and then we have to go to the first text in Daniel 12 verse 1. In this text, we read that the Michael stands up for his people, and no one will be able to stand against him. All we must do is to choose which side we will stand on in he, this final struggle. And we read that here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And we also read that the papacy will come to his end, and none shall help him. So the Bible also reveals how it will go with the papacy in the last part of world history. They think that they will uh, win this battle about to introduce a new world order. But God has another plan to introduce his new world order. And it is God's plan that will be the plan that will, that will uh, give victory. But now we shall see how it will go in with the papacy. And I hope that many Catholics and fallen Protestants and others will listen to these words from the Bible. From Revelation 17 verse 16. And the ten horns with which you saw on the beast, these will hate the harlot, make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh and bur burn her with fire. At first the people admire the harlot, but when they understand that they have been, that they have been deceived by the harlot, they will kill the harlot. And we continue to read in Revelation 18, verse 4 to 8. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not her place. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double into her double according to her words. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to the double. How much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she said in her heart, I sit a queen, and I am no widow, 
and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. So we see how it's going with the papacy and all that is that is going together with the papacy. They will end in the lake of fire. And then we read about the victory in Revelation chapter 15 verse 2. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over the image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the hearts of God. So the people of God, they have been in a battle in the last part of world history. They have been in a battle against the beast, the mark of the beast. The image of the beast and the number of his name, and they have gone. They have they have gotten victory over the beast and the image of the beast and the mark of the beast and so on, and they, they stood saved in the kingdom of God. We are living in the last part of this dream that Nebuchadnezzar had had when he saw this statue that had a head of gold, uh, a breast of uh, uh, silver, and a, and a hip of uh, bronze, and legs of iron, and then in the feet it was iron and clay. And we are living in this last part, in the feet, in the foot, and perhaps in the feet of this statue. And the Bible is saying it will be ten kings. They will work against Christ. And they will try to establish their world power in this earth. And Christ will let them do their work. But just to, to let the world see the evil deeds, what they are doing. And at last when all is revealed that what Satan is doing through his agents, Christ will come and stop all this. Because Nebuchadnezzar he saw a stone coming from heaven and hit the feet of the statue. And all the nations was ruined. And the stone was the stone of Christ. It was his kingdom that will be revealed. Christ is the rock as we read it from 1 Corinthians 10.4. And he said to the, he, Christ said to the Jews, Therefore I say unto you, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you, and given to a nation, being, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grain him to power. It is up to you, and me, if we will fall upon this stone, if we will fall upon Christ, if not, the stone will fall upon us. It is your choice, it is my choice. We have a short time, no, we are living in the end time, and the prophecies in the Bible will be fulfilled. Christ will soon come back again, and we have to take a choice. Will we submit to these world powers, or we will, if, will we submit to Christ and accept His salvation? You have to take a clear stand. You cannot stand with one foot in the world and one foot in the Bible. We have to take a clear stand for Christ or a clean, clear stand for the world. 
But we know the result. It is Christ and the people that will stand on His side that will be the victorious one. We have to take the decision here in our brain. If And we have to use this center. This center where we shall take conclusions. Where we shall choose. And we have to take a clear stand for Christ or for the world. Christ is standing there with his hands, waiting for us to accept his call of mercy. He has done all to save us. And why should we not be thankful to him, what he has done for us? He has a better place for us. And if we humble ourselves and accept his salvation, we will be his people and he will protect us. And we will inherit the kingdom of God. May you and me use this time to purify ourselves so we can be clean in heart. We read this text from Malachi chapter 3. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. Today is the time of purification. Today is the shaking time. It is no we have to take a stand for Christ. Because soon the time of purification will end and Christ will come back again. Do you want to be purified by Him? Or do you want to be filthy and lose eternal life? The choice is yours and by. The prophecies is being fulfilled and we see that we are living in the end time and Christ will soon come back again. Let us be ready for his second coming. We will end with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you have revealed what will happen in the last time of this world history. We do not understand so much about what is happening. But we are so thankful for your word and we can read there. And as time is going on we understand more and more of these prophecies. And we pray that you must help us, each one of us, so we can take time. That we can humble ourselves and be ready when you soon come back again. In Jesus' name we pray.